Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a really fun card project today. I'm going to be using all of these supplies. I'll dive into it in a moment. Today's tutorial is going to be all about layering color to create texture with your solid stamps. Now these two cards are the inspiration for the tutorial today. I'm going to be doing a little bit of pattern work in here as well, but you can see this two-tone color look and some texture on those solid stamp. I'm also going to do a bonus mini tutorial on how to create this effect with this large background diamonds. Okay, so here is the card that we're going to create in today's tutorial. I'm super excited about this. You know that I love the stamps to be the star of the show and we're just going to dive in and get to it. So all of the supplies are going to be listed below in the description, but I'm using some blending tools. I've got all of these items here, and again, they're going to be listed in the description. I'm using two stamp sets. I've got the Bloom and grow stamp set and I've got some of the companion dies. I've got quite a few inks here. I've got obsidian. I've got wild dandelion, passionate pink. I'm using fresh asparagus and tangerine twist. Now with the blending tools, you can decide which tools you'd like to use. Um, I've got two different here and I'm going to go over how I'm going to use them in the mini tutorial for the diamonds. I'm also using Gina K Designs cardstock. I have that listed below as well, as well as the sizes for the card and the base. Okay, so let's talk about the technique for applying layers of ink to create added texture and dimension. And there's lots of ways that you can do this. There's a technique called rock and roll that you can do, but today I'm going to do this technique with blending brushes. So I'm going to be applying color to this solid stamp in two, with two different brushes and I'm going to talk about how it adds a extra texture. So I've got this Gina K Designs blending brush. I'm dipping it into the passionate pink and you can see that I'm just, I would say dabbing it, just dabbing it down into the center of the bloom and grow sunflower here. So I'm not swiping across, I'm dabbing it down and just kind of reapplying and getting it saturated with ink. I'm taking another blender brush here, doing the same thing with the tangerine twist ink. Now, the more I dab with the blender brushes, because the brush has got such fine bristles, it adds a little bit of texture to the ink impression that I'm making. And you can see that you could see little like um, little pills of color there. Now, when I go to stamp this, I'm going to be working in a pattern. If you haven't seen my pattern tutorials, I'll link them up below and in the card as well. But I'm gonna be working in three. So I'm starting at the top here and I'm loving the way this texture looks already. I've got a little boogery spot, but I'm not worried. Look at the texture from the blending brushes. So this is from just dabbing the color on and I'm able to layer those two colors together. You could layer up to three, four, as many colors as you wanted. I really just wanted to use the pink and the tangerine twist here just because they're great little pop colors. They're super bright and I think they're fun to use with this sunflower. So I'm doing this technique again, but I'm working in the reverse color. So in the center here, I'm using the tangerine twist and then I'm going around the outer edge with the passionate pink. Now, because the bristles, and I know I've said this already, but because the bristles are so fine, they are going to create some texture automatically in the ink where, as I'm dabbing the ink down. And each time I do this, it's going to be a little bit different. And that's what makes it kind of super fun and unique. So look at this flower. So you can see that I've dabbed um, the outer edge with 
the passionate pink and the inner inner part with the tangerine twist and it's got a completely different look than the other floral that I've already done at the top but I'm digging it I'm loving it because of all of the added texture it makes the stamp be the star of the show which you know is my super fave um, I love to use stamps to the max and just applying ink color this way from the stamp pad to the blender brush to the stamp I'm able to create another layer of texture so these flowers look like they have a lot of texture and dimension but we haven't added any height to the card so you can see that I'm going back and forth a little bit I'm adding some color I'm going to cover up that little schmutzy spot that I got in the beginning with this bloom and it's just going to be delightful. I'm gonna cover up my inks here because I keep getting my hands in there and making schmutzes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp this down. And I've got this order of threes going. So I've got a nice pattern started on my cardstock. Now, let's take a look at the colors here. So we've got all three on here. I've used the same technique, but the ink application is a little bit different using the same blending tools, but look at all the texture. As I pull it close, you get a different kind of texture in each petal. This technique can work with any solid stamp in your stash. Now I'm going to stamp some more layers, but this time I'm using the smaller, smaller sunflower from the Bloom and Grow set inking it up with wild dandelion and I'm going to nest that stamped image in threes right next to the other larger blooms that I've already stamped down in the two colors. Now this is going to add some contrast to the design. It also adds this illusion of layers of color and layers of imagery and it adds that extra little bit of pop of yellow that really makes the orange and the pink pop even more that's what i love about yellow okay so i'm going to go ahead and stamp down the stem and again i'm going to use fresh asparagus now fresh asparagus this is a great contrasting color with the colors we've already used when i go to stamp it down here i'm going to layer it over top of the stamped images i already have stamped and i'm going to Bring it down a little bit so it goes off the bottom of the cardstock. And you can see that that color layers right over top of that pink um, flower on both sides. And when it dries, the color underneath it is going to pop through. You see right now it's starting to pop through. That's what I love about Gina Kay's inks because they're they're very transparent so we can get the illusion of a lot of layers of color without adding an intense amount of dimension to the card okay so now I'm going to create the pop layer for adding texture and dimension and this is the only piece on the card that I'm actually going to pop up on the card so I'm using obsidian I like to use black now I thought about stamping this in the fresh asparagus but I really do like to use black ink when I want a pop or focal point on the card so I'm going to go ahead and stamp that out and get a nice clean impression with the obsidian ink and then get ready to um, grab the companion die that goes with this set and just line it up and get it ready to run through my uh, platinum six die cutter okay with the flower in the bloom and grow stamp set the sunflower i've got these two petals that look like claws and i've mentioned this in a couple other tutorials and i've actually marked that spot on the die so that i can just line it up perfectly every single time i just left that little tiny piece of painters tape there so that i can line it up and now i'm just going to get it ready and run it through my die cutter so that i can get that die cut okay so here is the die cut. You can see it shifted a little bit in the um, die cutter, but that's okay. I really kind of like it when it does that. Gives it a little extra something, um, a little extra room, and it's a little bit wonky, and everybody knows how much I like the wonky stuff. 
Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and add the sentiment because sweet little sentiments bring all the joy. And I'm taking this stamp, the sweet friend um, from this stamp set from Gina K Designs. I'm just going to go ahead and ink it up with some obsidian, stamp it down on this little piece of cardstock that I have here. And this was the piece that I used for the flower and ran it through the die cutter. And I'm grabbing this banner die from the master layouts set. Um, again, all of these items will be listed in the description below. And I'm just gonna go ahead, line this up and run this through my die cutter and just get this sweet little sentiment ready to go. So before we get to putting the card together, we're gonna do this bonus lesson where I'm going to share two ways to layer color on the diamonds that are in the blue and Bloom and Grow stamp set. Now the diamonds are perfect for creating backgrounds. I love creating pattern backgrounds, but I grabbed two of the blending tools. Now you can do this technique with any blending tool you have in your stash. I started going through my stash and not only did I have the blending brushes, but I had these really fun foam blending tools. I believe these are from Ranger. So I'm going to show you that the technique is basically exactly the same and often the results are the same too. So it doesn't really matter which blending brush or blending tool you use. Now the foam is very, very fine. So is the blending brushes. So my sense is that um, if you used a sponge dauber or if you use something of a blending tool that had a really, really fine, um, fine base to it, like the blending tool, uh, the blending brush or the foam, you're going to get a similar effect. But we all have these tools in our stash. So you don't always need the latest and greatest. Try this technique with what you have and then you can see what you like and then you can decide if you want to get something different. So I'm showing the diamonds with the technique that we did with the flower. And I'm just applying ink in the same exact way. So I'm doing them side by side here so that you can see what the end result is going to be. But overall, this technique is super fun to use with these diamonds to create multicolored backgrounds. You can add layers and layers of color to give your card a lot of extra texture and dimension without a lot of height. So the star of the show would be the stamps, which makes it super fun. Now I'm gonna bring this close to the camera so you can take a look. The one on the left, the one on the right that I'm pointing to right now is the blending foam. The one on the left is the blending brush. So you can see that it's very similar in its effect and I really, really like it. Um, so you could do this technique with whatever you have in your stash. Now, I was digging around for my sponge daubers to see what that would look like and some of my like pouncy brush blender thingies. Um, I've got the wrong term for that, I know, but I decided to just grab these two and see how I could make it work. And I'm just using this little, um, doing the same technique with the diamond, the small diamond here, so that you can see how you can nest these diamonds together to start to build the pattern on your cardstock background. So look at this, it virtually looks the same. So you could try this with anything that you have in your stash. It's a super fun way to add extra texture and dimension. Again, blending foam versus blending brush. You can see that I've got very, very similar effects. I would love to hear from you if you've tried this with a sponge dauber or something else, um, maybe those pouncy brushes, and see if you've gotten a similar um, look and feel. Okay, let's take a quick look at it now that it's dried just a little bit. Now, those two colors are so saturated. Look at the extra texture I was able to create in the small diamond simply by dabbing a little bit harder with my blender brush. And the diamonds in this stamp already have a little bit of a distressed edge that I built into the design. So you could really do this technique with these diamonds in a solid format, like the way I've shown in the card here, or blend up your colors and layer your color inks 
on the actual stamp and get a completely different look for your background. I just love that. All right, we're coming to the moment of truth. It's time to assemble the card and bring it all together. Now this one's gonna come together super simple. Since we did most of the card layering with color on that base layer. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to the back of this. I'm using some Gina K Designs Connect Glue. I'm dropping that onto that card base. A Little bit of foam dot behind the sunflower and I'm just gonna pop that on and kind of give it a little twist to make it a little bit wonky. And then I'm just going to add the sweet friend sentiment right at the base of the stem. And I really like that white on white. And it's just, I didn't pop it up at all. I just kind of put a little bit of glue on the back and it already is just kind of sitting there nicely. So I'm using these crystalline drops from Gina K Designs. I really like these drops because when they dry, they look like an enamel dot. And I love that little black dot because it helps draw your eye to the flower. So let's take a final look at the card. Are you feeling the joy of this card? I'm totally feeling it. Look at the colors. The inks have dried back into the cardstock. Look at all of those texture marks, all that texture and dimension in the blooms. And we haven't added any layers to the card, any height layers. So it looks like we've got flowers in the background and flowers in the foreground, and it's just absolutely super fun and gorgeous. Don't forget to pick up the free Bloom and Grow card idea sheet. The download link is in the description. I have card idea sheets for mostly every single stamp set in my Gina K Designs collection. You can always grab them on my website for free at indigojadeart.com slash craftyourjoy. And again, the link is down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And I'm sharing more card and watercolor tutorial videos for your inspiration right here. So come on in and take a peek at my tutorials. I have a lot to share and I'll see you next time.